Well, there was once a little boy who lived in a shack with his stepmother and stepfather. He was only a little lad. Was he a step ladder? <laughs> no, he was an orphan. Uh, have you ever seen an orphan? No, I haven't. No. No what? No orphans. <laughs> Foxy little muzzler. Well, anyhow, this orphan was selling papers on the street when he came to a toy store with a, 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 a green glass windows. Um, you've seen green glass windows, haven't you? No. No what? I ain't talking. <laughs> Keep trying, Daddy. Yeah. Well, the little boy came to this toy shop and suddenly he saw... Wait a minute. I think you've heard this story before. You bet your life I have. <laughs> you thought I was going to say no, I haven't. You lose. No skates. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. What's the use? Listen, Christmas only comes once a year. I'll buy you the skates. Honest, Daddy? <laughs> yes, honest. <laughs> You're the bestest daddy in the whole world. <laughs> now you're cooking with gas. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll hear from Jessica Dragonette and Lanny Ross. But first, here's Warren Hall, ready to set the stage for a Christmas scene that takes place at... Um... Say, Warren, where is this celebration, anyway? Well, Eddie, it's sure to take place in countless homes all over America. As the scene opens, Christmas dinner is just about over. As Mr. Smith pushes back his chair, Mrs. Smith says... Well, Frank, did you enjoy your dinner? Enjoy it? Well, it was perfect. The turkey was done to a turn. The pie was wonderful. And say, that Maxwell House coffee topped it all off in grand style. Yes, friends, good coffee is mighty important to the success of any Christmas dinner. And if it's Maxwell House coffee you serve, you can be sure it will be just as satisfying, just as fragrantly delicious as the good things that go with it. You see, Christmas and Maxwell House are no strangers. For more than 50 years, the rare and mellow flavor of this famous coffee blend has held the essence of the joyous season. And through the years... We have worked to make Maxwell House the finest coffee you can buy. Today, millions of people are telling us it is. In fact, this Christmas, more people will be enjoying Maxwell House than ever before in its history. But, of course, Maxwell House coffee is not merely a holiday treat, but something we can all afford to enjoy every day. Yes, in the quiet of our homes, every day in the year that is to come, there will always be a friendly, festive fragrance in the air whenever there's a cheering cup of Maxwell House coffee at hand. So if you haven't tried Maxwell House for some time, let me suggest that you get a can tomorrow. We think your own enjoyment and satisfaction will tell you that Maxwell House coffee is now, more than ever, good to the last drop. Now we're going to hear from our New York contingent on the program. A distinguished Maxwell House alumnus, Lanny Ross, and radio's foremost soprano, the charming Jessica Dragonette. Meredith, you worked with Lanny on the showboat program of Maxwell House, didn't you? Yes, I did, Ed. Ever worked with Jessica? No, I never. But I've seen some snaps of her, and believe me, it would be a pleasure. <laughs> well, I assume she's she's listening now, and so I'll ask her to say a few words of greeting to you. Oh, gee, thanks, Ed. You know, I'm getting to be quite a transcontinental flirt. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome to our program Jessica Dragonette and your old showboat friend, Lanny Ross. Lanny, come aboard again and bring Jessica with you. Thank you, Mr. Arnold. And as they say in the old Navy toast, glad to be aboard. It's great fun for me to be back on a Maxwell House program again. And Jessica, I think you're going to enjoy it, too. Oh, I'm sure I will. You know, Lanny, I was always a little nervous about the showboat program because I'm uneasy on the water. Even a rowboat frightens me. But I feel perfectly comfortable now. I think you'll be all right, Jessica. Now, if anything goes wrong, you'll find a life preserver under your deck chair. A life preserver? Yeah, a can of Maxwell House coffee. Oh. And now I think it would be nice if you'd follow Edward Arnold's suggestion and say something nice to Meredith Wilson out in Hollywood. Oh, but I've never met Mr. Wilson. Oh. So how could I possibly well, say... Well, uh, I see what you mean, <laughs> but he'd get such pleasure out of it. You have no idea what a simple fellow he is. Mr. Wilson is simple? Well, that may not be just the word... But last year I gave him a candid camera for a present, 
And he was terribly disappointed because it wasn't covered with chocolate. Oh, well, I would be too. <laughs> you and Meredith would be great friends. Now, just say something friendly to him, and then we'll sing. All right. But, Lanny, I hope he doesn't think I'm being forward. I trust Mr. Wilson will enjoy a pleasant holiday season. Uh, that's as far as you're going to go? Oh, but don't you think I've said too much already? <laughs> All right, Jessica, let's sing. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Make Believe, famous song from Jerome Kern's showboat. And we're singing it for two people somewhere who are probably in love. Now to Hollywood. 